we are just glad to be here. Uh, we are very, very happy to be in the house of God today. Uh, can we say amen? amen? How many of you are happy people? Yeah. I, I'm serious. Uh, I, I'm just going to speak today out of my heart and from some of, some of my message from this morning. But also I'm going to blend in what God has given me for Pastor Ken and for for this place. Faith builders. Amen. The new norm. Come on, put your hands together. For you. Amen. I'm thankful. I want you to just bow your heads in prayer with me. Now, Father, we thank you. Because you are true. Your word is true, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that there is nothing impossible with you, that all things are possible. We're so thankful this day, Lord God, to celebrate 40 years. Four years and 17 years of happening of your spirit moving in this man. We thank you, O oh God, because we know that you have called. And many are the called, but few are the chosen. So we thank you for choosing him right now in the name of Jesus. But we thank you for this place. Lord, we thank you for this place that we gather together to, to, to worship you. But also, Lord, to get a word, to hear from you. Not only just to hear, but to become and be made disciples that we may take this light to a dark world. We thank you right now, Lord God, the ear that is of hearing. I pray right now, Lord, that you open it. Lord, Lord, that they may hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. But also, Lord God, as you speak to the heart that is heavy, Lord, I ask that you give it, lift it up in Jesus' name. Give strength, Lord God, where there is weakness. And the mind that has got to be brought into unity of faith, believing in Jesus. Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And we say, give strength right now. Amen. And amen. 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 We're just glad to be here again. I'm thankful. And I am no stranger to, to faith builders. I, I, I can remember when. But I'm thankful that God has allowed me to continue and our relationship to continue on through this time period. I want you to go with me to the book of Psalms. I'm going to stay in the book of Psalms, but I'm going to jump over into the New Testament also. I probably will quote some of the New Testament, but, but I want to jump, uh, be in the, in the uh, Old Testament. Um, the Old Testament. How, how many know that it's, the, it's, it's not between the new and the old? It's called the Word of God. If you understand the Word of God, it works no matter where you place it. If you put it in the new, it still works. If you put it in the old, it still works. And I'm just thankful for the Word of God. If you love the Word of God, say, I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Go to Psalms 122 and 1. Psalms 122 and 1. One twenty-two and one. When you have it, would you stand? Because we're going to also go to to the book of uh, the thirty-seventh division of Psalm. Also after one twenty-two. Yes, yes. All right. Are you ready? All right. It says it says a song of degrees of David. It says and I want everybody to say this with me. I was glad when they said unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. All right, now let's say it all together. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Now, if you have your Bibles, go with me to Psalms 37. When you have that, say amen. amen. It says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as green as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall 
bring it to pass. Now I want you to drop down the verse about verse number 20. Uh, three, I think it is. Yes, verse number 23. We're going to have it say amen. amen. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand. You may be seated in the house of the Lord today. You may be seated in the house of the Lord today. I just want you to just repeat after me, dedicated, focus. Now, just this, everybody with as loud as you can say it, these two words, happy people. Happy people. All right. Now give the Lord a hand, please. Happy people. Dedicated focus. Happy people. Uh, I, 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 I can't, can't uh, uh, ever not remember how good God has been to me. He has been so good to me. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And you might say, "Well, Pastor Kevin, uh, we believe he's been good to you, but he's been good to me too." Then why don't you just give him a thank you right there? If you know he's been good to you, then give him a thank you. Give him a thank you. Give him a thank you. The word "dedicated" just simply means devoted to a task or purpose. Dedicated. To a task or purpose. Dedication comes to mind. And when you think of the word dedicate or dedicated, dedicated is, is dedication in action. It's dedication in action. One of the, the challenges of our time is to find or, or to have those that will be dedicated. Not, not just those who jump on when it looks good or when things are running smoothly or when things are, are up and running and going. Uh, and, and those three sisters that you see in the back right now that came up and said, they are some, I can say with a shirt, they are some dedicated people. They are some dedicated members because they follow their pastor just about everywhere I go. And they're dedicated, and not dedicated to me, but they're dedicated to the Lord. And there's a difference between dedication to a man and dedicated to God. Because God never fails. But men will let you down. Men will come up short because the human condition still exists. You can yes, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the mighty power of God, I'm Holy Ghost fear, I'm fire baptized, I got Jesus on my side, and I'm running for my life. And I do speak in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance, but the human condition I still have to fight. I still have to fight because look at your neighbor say your flesh ain't saved. Your flesh is not saved. Your flesh is not saved. I'm telling you, your flesh is not saved. If not for God, if not for the Spirit of God that dwells on the inside, many of us would do the same thing we see other people doing. Amen. But we've been bought with a price. That's what we understand. We've been bought with a price, and so we now have dedicated. We dedicated our life to the Lord. We dedicated our life. Could you give me just a little? I don't know if you got monitors up here, but uh, uh, just a little. Uh, I can stand out there. If it's loud out there, I can come out there and stand. Yeah, you want me to stand? Yes, yes, yes. Just a little monitor. Just a little monitor for me. Thank you. Yes. Yes, see. Testing, testing. Yeah. I don't want to mess up your display. <laughs> it looks good, doesn't it? Come on, put your hands together. That looks good. But dedicated, de dedicated, devoted to a task or a purpose. Focus, dedicated focus. Focus is a center of interest or activity. A center of interest or activity. A center of interest or activity. When we give our life to the Lord, we are not saved to sit still. We are not saved to sit still. Now, I used to think I was one of the hardest working pastors in Muncie. But I, I heard something today that, that made, made, made me think I got a good, somebody, a good friend that's, that's running right alongside of me. 
Because I cut grass, I paint, I climb roofs, I do bathroom, I do it all. If I, 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 there's no task in the house of God that I will not do. Because if I can't, if I tell you to do it and I can't do it, then that does, that says something about my character. And you have a pastor of good character, put those hands together. Come on. Put those hands together. But since the beginning of time, God has always, always, and we read in the Psalms in 122, uh, God has always had a place, has always had a meeting place with man. He's always had a meeting place with man. And, and, and one of the first meeting places that, that we probably don't even realize was one of the first meeting places that God met man was while we were still yet clay. When he had four men out of the dust of the ground, one of the first meeting places was the breath, he blew breath into our nostrils. And man became a living soul because without, without that, thank you, without that, guess what? Man would not eat, just man would have just been a statue. But God has always had a meeting place. And he breathed into man the breath of life. And man became a, a living soul. And, and guess what? After he blew in the breath of life, he placed man in the garden. And, and I was, obviously there was a place that he met Adam in the cool of the day. When Adam heard that his voice was walking in the cool of the day, and the Bible says that Adam heard his voice walking but was ashamed. Wherever you go against what God has said, wherever you go against the word of God, this is something you need to always keep in your mental role of this. Whenever you go up against the what God has said, sin will always take reign. Whenever you words are disobedient to what God has commanded, I don't care if it's at Adam, I don't care if it's going down the street. And you, you you don't use what God has told you to do or do what God has told you to do. It doesn't matter. You still see a liar still at the door. And it doesn't really matter. And so so he, he talks in the Bible says that God said, Adam, where are thou? And he said, where are you? Because there was a meeting place. Everybody said a meeting place. And when Adam had, had he had told Adam, uh, Adam had told God that I was naked and I was ashamed. Because oftentimes sin will make you shame. Sin will make you feel shameful. It will make you feel uh, apprehensive to even come even to the house of God. Because why? Sin is a reproach to any people. It does. It, that's what it does. And guess what? Sin has not changed since the beginning of time. Sin is still sin no matter who is in it. And so we find that God was still, even when Abraham left his country, and to arrive in a land that God had promised to him, there was a place that Abraham had designated as Bethel, which meant the house of God. When Jacob fled from Esau, upon sleeping in a place where he saw angels of the city, a ladder that came from heaven down to earth, an angel were ascending and descending, there he, that was a place called Bethel, called the house of God. Everybody shout the house of God. Then God always met man, and he always had a meeting place with man. He had a place with meeting when he told Moses, he said, I want you to build this tabernacle. We call it the tent of meeting. It was a place where God would show up, where God would accept their sacrifices for their sins. I'm so glad we don't have to carry that around any longer. I don't know about you, but I give God praise. But the tabernacle was a temporary worship place of worship that the Israelites built according to God's specifications. And I'm going to tell you something. God has an order. God has a way of doing things. And I don't care what the word says, God's way is still the right way. It's still the right way. And, 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 and they wandered in the desert and wandering in the desert. And the tabernacle went with them until David moved the tabernacle to Mount Zion, right at the at the at the hill of Jerusalem. And and, and Mount Zion was there with David. They would always look to Mount Zion to go up and worship. And this is where this song comes from because Mount Zion sat on the cliff of the rock where everybody could see 
Mount Zion. Come on, somebody. Everybody can see it's still, even in the intestine, we were still to be a light and a celebrated here that could not be here. Even in the Old Testament, he gives us type and shadows of the things that were to come, even in the New Testament. And David wanted to build God a new house. But the Bible lets us know that God told David, no. Your hands were too quick to shed innocent blood, and your hands were too bloody, but Solomon built a temple. And Solomon understood that the church is not just a building, but not just when, and let me tell you something, the church is not just a building. I am so tired of hearing people talk about the church and talk about the building. We're not talking, when I say come together as the church, the building is just the edifice in which we gather. Either, but don't mistake the house of God as just any old building. Don't mistake it as any old building. Don't get it twisted. Because God is still in the room. God still watches over his house. God still does miracles in this place. I heard it this morning that God is still doing miracles. Yeah, when God is involved, wherever we have my shirt, my shirt becomes a vessel of something that God can use. Because when you look in the, in the New Testament, the Bible says that the clothing of Paul, when they laid the cloth of cloth, clothing on somebody, people got healed. People were healed by the shadow because of Peter. Because why? There was a dedicated purpose in who and what he was trying to do. Right? He didn't just do it haphazardly. Even though at first Peter thought that it was just about fighting and winning. Right? He didn't realize that he had to put on the whole armor of God. And he didn't understand. He finally found out what dedicated focus really meant. But Solomon builds the temple, and, and, and we read said the Chronicles, the seventh chapter, and if you wait back in the fifth chapter, you find that it talks about how when the musicians and trumpeters and singers were as one. Everybody say as one. Not with one, but as one. That means there's a difference between being with one and as one. With one means that we're trying to get there. As one means we're already there. And it says, and for now, it says, now understand, we read that seventh chapter, the fifth chapter says that the Spirit of God had came in so strong that they couldn't even minister, the priest could not even minister, because the glory of the Lord filled the temple. But the glory, I don't know about you, but I love the glory of the Lord. I love seeing God's fill his house with his glory. I'm not talking about performance, I'm talking about God. I'm, leaving, I'm not talking about uh, uh, acrobatics. I'm talking about the glory of the Lord means. Uh, meaning that the priest had to show up. Uh, meaning that all the people, all the they want to say uh, is he is weird. Uh, and his mercy is good forever. Uh, that's all they can say. Uh, for he is good and his mercy is good forever. I wonder if we can do that just for a couple, about 30 seconds or a minute and see what God God does in the midst of us today. Right? Oh, he's good. Come on, say it. Oh, he's good. And his mercy and good forever. Oh, he's good. And his mercy and good forever. Oh, he's good. And his mercy and good forever. Let faith maybe say, Oh, he's good. And his mercy and good forever. Let the church of the living God say, Oh, he's good. And his mercy and good forever. Oh, he's good. And his mercy. Endure forever. Oh, God, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 I feel something already. I know it. I know. I know about this presence of God because God has always shown me and showed up with his presence. 
And we read that chapter and we look at the, at the building and say, oh my goodness, and of course it was magnificent in terms of the building. It was magnificent in the way, way that it was built. But that was not the major, uh, that was not the major understanding. Yeah, because Moses had already told God uh, that if you don't go, I won't go either. Uh, and all of us have to say the same thing. Yeah, if he doesn't go with us. I can't go either uh, because the presence of God is powerful. The presence of God is powerful. And so we read that fifth chapter, but the seventh chapter we kind of overlook uh, because we are uh, we love what it says that if my people for it, when I set up heaven and there be no rain, if I send the locusts to devour uh, uh, the people, uh, or if I, I, I send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will honor themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, we love that part because we quote that part, uh, but it doesn't do anything in terms of the space that we occupy uh, because the Bible says uh, in 7 and 16 uh, for now I have chosen uh, and sanctified this house he said now I have chosen uh, and sanctified this house uh, that my name may be there forever oh God. Uh, look at your name and say forever forever that means it won't stop because Malachi is that means it won't stop because Jeremiah is in the wind it doesn't stop because Isaiah is done with it doesn't stop because the song has run out but his parents will be in the house forever oh God oh God I thank you I thank you but he never said that. He says, my eyes and my heart would be there perpetually. Oh, my goodness. Somebody ought to give that praise right there. Oh, God. And the meeting places, the meeting places that God will meet man. He will meet humanity. He will meet us in places. Uh, and, 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 and so and even in the, in the New Testament, Zacharias found himself in, in his, I believe it's the first chapter of the book of St. Luke. Uh, he found himself after the, uh, after the, uh, Order of his priesthood uh, serving in the temple, and that's when the angel Gabriel uh, spoke to him uh, and let him know that his prayer has been answered. Uh, it's one thing to go to the house of God uh, and God speak back, uh, and we not understand uh, that he's supposed to speak back. <laughs> oh God, uh, because he even tells Zacharias, uh, he says, Zacharias. Uh, Fear not. You don't have to worry because your prayer has been answered. But let's know God. But many people are like Zachariah. They come to the house of God with no expectation of God moving, with no expectation of the presence of God, no expectation of God giving a word. And so when God does speak, it alarms them, it shocks them to the place where Zachariah couldn't enjoy his blessing uh, until the blessing came to pass. <laughs> I don't want God to move me, uh, oh God, uh, to save my blessing, uh, because if he didn't need Zechariah, uh, he might have messed up the whole thing, uh, and when Zechariah was needed, uh, when he comes out of the temple, he comes out and everybody's saying, that must have been a move of God, uh, but the man can't speak. <laughs> oh God, uh, but he should have been satisfied uh, because he had been praying him and his wife Elizabeth uh, to have a baby. Uh, he should have been satisfied. Uh, he should have been excited. Uh, he should have been happy, uh, if you please, uh, that the Lord had answered his prayer. Right. Oh, God. That was one meeting place. Uh, but there was also a meeting. Even Jesus had a meeting place. Uh, you know, it was a place called the God of the Seminary. Uh, he would go there to pray. Uh, not many times. Not, not just sometimes, but many times. Uh, he would go there to pray. Uh, and the last time he was there, uh, that he prayed so hard uh, that sweat fell from his blood uh, like great drops of blood uh, because he knew and understood uh, how to be dedicated uh, uh, and focused. Uh, he understood the value. Uh, he understood the value and what 
makes me so patient uh, is the fact that while he prayed uh, and after he got done praying, uh, there were angels. Uh, the Bible says, I didn't write it up. Uh, it was here for I got here uh, that came and ministered unto him. Uh, I got news for you. Uh, if you become dedicated, uh, if you become focused, uh, if you have a dedicated focus, uh, then God will have his angels uh, minister to you. Oh, come on. The other day was minister to you. Uh, and I'm so glad. Uh, I am so glad to be uh, There was a place called that Jesus had told his disciples. Uh, there was a place he told them, uh, I'm going to meet you there. Uh, they didn't know where you were from. Uh, but they know he said, Go to Jerusalem. Uh, oh my God. And tell me there. Uh, so you be endued with power from on high. Uh, and I'm so glad that there is a meeting place. Uh, because that's where the church. Was burnt out of uh, because why the Holy Ghost, uh, the Spirit of the Living God, uh, that came down uh, and refreshed everybody that was there. Uh, it's a move of God. Everybody shout, it was a move of God. Oh God, and I'm so thankful today, and the reason why I'm teaching and preaching this message today is because we are living in an age where we have forsaken the assembling of ourselves together, because we have become so intelligent, so intoxicated by our knowledge, that we all of a sudden, I had somebody, I told him, I, I told him, Pastor, someone came up to me and said, well, Pastor Kevin, um, let me just share with you that uh, the church is not the building. Really, Sherrod. As though, as though I didn't know that. As though and, and in this new age, they come up, they have it, they take a piece of scripture and try to make it like they are in. <laughs> like they actually know the word of God. And, and I said, okay, okay, I said, that's good. And I, he said, well, and, you know, it don't have to be on Sunday. I said, okay, that's good. I said, so then, I said, so I'm thinking to myself, because I have this little man that sits in a chair. And I know you probably don't have this. He sits right in front of my forehead. He sits in a chair. He just walks. He don't bother nobody. He don't really bother nobody. So somebody says something off the wall. Somebody says something. And he said, what? So this little man said, Okay, well then if you don't worship on Sunday, then we do he worship uh, because he has called us to come together. I don't care if it's in this building or I don't care if it's out there in the parking lot, uh, but he has called us to come together. Uh, and I said, Well, then do you worship? Uh, well, you know, I said, No, no, tell me uh, because you was really intelligent when you said that you know you thought you were really giving me something that, that I didn't know uh, when you said that the ecclesia. Uh, and I know about the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia is the body of Christ. It's the body. It's the physical body of Christ. Oh, my goodness. But even the physical body has to have a place to come to. They used to go house to house. And whether you know it or not, a house is a place. It is still a place, uh, and we have to get out of our mind uh, because this mindset of this generation uh, is to try to upset uh, or turn the whole thing around uh, and make it palatable uh, for them. Uh, but I got news for you: uh, the same Holy Ghost, uh, the same Jesus, uh, the same God uh, that was back then uh, is still today. Uh, he ain't changed. Uh, I don't care what rules you change; uh, he has not. Change. And everybody thinks that there's a paradigm shift. There's a paradigm shift with us. There is no paradigm shift with God. He wants what he always did. He wants everything that he asked for out of Solomon. It's the same thing he asked out of Jesus. It's the same thing that he asked out of Peter. It's the same thing he asked out of power, uh, that we present our bodies uh, a living sacrifice, uh, holy and acceptable unto God, uh, which is our reasonable service. Uh, look at your neighbor right there uh, and say, Lord, you ain't doing nothing. Uh, it's just reasonable. Uh, you ain't doing above good. Uh, you couldn't pay for the debt that you're just about to take. Uh, you couldn't pay for it if you wanted to. Uh, if the debt had to be paid for, uh, then none of us could afford it. Longer than probably five seconds. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. But even Jesus.
Jesus says, uh, Jesus says, there's a very just being uh, at the people got the insight from the Spirit of God. Uh, he said, Thou art the Christ, uh, the Son of the living God. Uh, even Jesus said, Peter, uh, Thou art the rock. Uh, thou upon this rock I will build my church, uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Uh, but we gotta go in a little bit further, uh, because why we would quote that part, uh, but the next phrase, uh, he said, and whatsoever uh, you bind on earth uh, shall be bound in heaven. Uh, whatsoever you loose on earth uh, shall be loose in heaven. Uh, meaning that he gave us authority. Uh, he didn't give all my Jesus. Uh, he gave us authority uh, to set forth. Uh, you can set forth. Uh, if I want to shake your head, I can set forth uh, because heaven agrees. Oh my goodness. Heaven agrees. For heaven agrees. Because that's what he said. That whatsoever you bind, whatsoever you lose, heaven is in agreement with you. If a Peter had established, Peter had done some things, Paul had done some things, and now we come into our day, and that same order is still true. Because God calls a man, we didn't call him, God calls a man. Yeah, if they'll pass me. If anybody calls a man, I can tell you now that if you call the pastor, because somebody says you got a head like a preacher, or you talk and sound like a preacher, or you move like a preacher, I will tell you right now, you in trouble. Because if God don't call you, if God don't verify you, if God doesn't set you back, then I promise you, you may be in trouble. But I thank God today that I'm not in a church that's not happy about being in the church. Oh, yes, because the Bible says, and it says in this, it says in that once that Psalms 122, I'm about to come to my close. It says in 122 and 1, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Do you not know God will not have a house without order? He will not have a house without leadership. The steps of a good man are ordered by. The Lord. But before we get there, I've got to tell you, let the Lord try to dictate. I'm so sick of the world telling the church what we need to do. You just do what you do because you're not going to be saved. I know who God is calling and who God calls because no man comes to God unless he draws. No man comes. No man comes. <laughs> Unless he's wrong, and the world cannot dictate what I do to God. The world cannot tell me what I can say about God. The world, the government, nobody can tell me. I jump out in the middle of nothing and give God a picture. I don't do it anymore. I do wrong because why? It is He that saved me, and not me myself. But God has called me to the order of the church. Somebody give God a praise right there. Oh God. And I know you don't think that because now people think that what we do, Pastor King, as pastor, is just a simple thing. It ain't that big of a deal. I can do what he can do. But I stop by to tell you the nurture of a pastor is not the nurture of, of, a, of, of a royalty. It's not the same nurture. Because the nurture that God puts on a man of God, he's dedicated to focus. He can allow you. I can allow no man. Let me just put it in my in my in my situation. I can allow no man at the church of the living God to go before God. I cannot allow. And I don't. I can take the idea that I got to stay on the path that God has put me on. Because if I stay on the path that God has put me on, I will see the blessings of God in the land of the living. I don't have to die to see God's blessings up, but I see it right now. I can see it right in my face. 
But God puts man in the house. He puts a man in the house. Because how can they feel without a preacher? And how can he preach except to be sent? And I forgot what you think that if I just talk like this, you don't have to holler at me. I had somebody tell me, no, I don't like to be hollered at. I don't have to be hollered at. You can just say it. But they don't even realize that the same word in the Greek for preach is the same word in the Greek for teach. There is no difference. And if you can show me a recording where Jesus talked like this, then I'll talk like this. If you can show me that in the recording, the recording, you can show me that Jesus never got loud. I know he got loud because if nothing else he moved and ran the many changes and told them this house should be a house of prayer. So don't tell me that God doesn't sanctify a house. Oh my God. He sanctifies a house uh, and he puts a man of God there. Uh, and we have to fight every day. Uh, we have to fight in our minds. Uh, we have to be concerned about every woman. Uh, whereas you just concerned about me, myself, and I. Uh, a leader has to be concerned about everybody. Uh, when you just concerned about us four and the Lord, uh, he's concerned about everybody. Uh, and not only concerned about everybody in the church, uh, but he's concerned some of the things that have not even come into the church. Yeah. And there is a powerful, uh, there is a powerful mantle. Uh, oh my goodness, I can't, I can show you. Uh, I can show you how powerful that mantle is. Uh, because when I really want to turn it up, when I really fight because of evil demons, uh, and those that work iniquity, uh, because it will look, when you look on the outside, uh, it will look like people getting away smooth. Uh, it looks like they just having a great time. But you are blessed, oh God. You are blessed here. You, know? you are dedicated. You got a dedicated focus. Uh, but you don't even take a trip uh, or a vacation without feeling uh, like you're laying down the standard. Uh, you don't do things uh, that people, other people do uh, because you have a laser uh, focus on what God has serving you to do. Uh, and when you have that laser focus, uh, then guess what happens? Uh, the enemy will paint a picture uh, that it don't take all of that. Uh, and then we don't have to do all of that. Uh, Pastor Kevin, you ain't got to go down and pray uh, and pray by yourself uh, at 6 or 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, you ain't got to get up out your bed. Uh, just lay there and let the membership do it. Uh, you ain't got to go down and do nothing. Uh, all you got enough membership. Uh, you got enough deacons. You got enough elders, you got enough people huh, that can do it. Huh? You don't have to do all of that. Huh? But when you have a dedicated huh, focus, huh, you do whatever it takes. Huh, because now I'm down there sometimes, huh, cleaning the bathroom. Huh, while I'm down there sometimes, huh, running the sweeper huh, and getting the dust mites huh, out of the ceiling. Huh, when I'm down there, huh, sometimes huh, I get a word from the Lord. Oh God, I the Lord for the Lord said, so be not willing in your deal because you show me if you faint not. That gives me a laser focus. My God, but when you have a dedicated focus, a dedicated focus, when you have a man of God that's willing to go the extra mile, when you have a man of God that's willing to lay in your behalf, when you can pray, he's praying. When you can cry, he's crying. When you can cover yourself, he's covering you. But I thank God today that I'm not in that kind of a church because what happened? When they say unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because in the house, you want to find the word of God preached. In the house, you want to find the word of God taught. In the house, you want to find God moving in people's lives. If anybody in here understands about being happy to be in the house of God, I want you to give him the best place. Hallelujah! 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 H
It doesn't mean that we don't get tired. Because the Bible says that the good steps, the steps of a good man, rather, are ordered. Ordered. Anybody ever been in the military? Anybody ever been where you had to take orders? When you had to deliver what the order has asked for? When God orders your steps, there are times you want to step outside the line. And there's sometimes we might step outside the line. And the Bible says that they he formed, oh, God will appoint him with his right hand, even though the steps are ordered. There's an opportunity for me to get in my flesh to do something I God didn't tell me to do. That deals to listen to the people that are going along with them and still what God has to say. And when that happens, it's no our fault. He still upholds me. Somebody will be happy right there. Because we don't even step outside. We don't cover outside the lines. We don't do some things that God ain't told us to do. We don't say some things that God ain't told us to say. We don't thought some thoughts that God ain't told us to think. But praise be to God for grace that is sufficient. That even though the Lord exists, grace still gets me the way. So in this house, God has always had a place where he meets us. But in this house, he does not leave us without a word. He does not leave us without a preacher. He does not leave us somebody that just don't care. He brings us into a place where we have someone that's concerned about our soul. And when you have that type of man, that type of woman, that type of boy, that type of girl, when you have that type of person that God has ordered their steps, you should celebrate God. You should celebrate God. Did you hear what I said? If you celebrate God by doing for Him, but you still celebrate God. Because we should be happy people. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Because in the house is the answer. In the house is still the way to go. In the house lies the presence of an all knowing God. And in the house, I can come to the altar. That my altar at home gets disrupted. Because the phone might ring. Somebody knocks on the door. Somebody's calling. Somebody, my wife is telling me, hey. But down here at the altar, I can close the doors. I can go when I want. Oh my Jesus. I can go when I want to. I don't have to wait on nobody. I can go. Dedicated focus creates happy people. Because I was glad when they said unto me, Let us, not just me. Let us, not just uh, a faith builders, let us, not just church of living God, let us, the body of Christ, let us, let us all go to the house of the Lord. Oh yeah, I'm happy. I don't know about you, but I'm just happy. I'm happy and, and, and we should be the happiest people on earth. We should be the happiest people on earth because we have the answer. Somebody asked me the other day about the answer because of the shooting and all the things. I said, it hasn't changed. Jesus is still the answer. We keep trying, man tries to have intuition. And man tries to use his technology and program this and program that. Program, no, until they meet Jesus. When they meet Jesus, it'll be the same as when you met Jesus. You just say, Lord, have thine own way. Do what you want to do with me. Do what you want to do, oh God. Have my own way. It hasn't changed. The power of God has not changed. It has not changed. And it's the power of God. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's still about Jesus. I told him when y'all when you when you get done with your program, then come to me and I'll tell you about Jesus. I'll tell you about a man that knows before you even open your mouth what you've been doing. I'll tell you about a man that can heal your broken heart. He can go into the dark places of your mind and shine light 
in your dark places. That's the one I know. That's the Jesus I know. Now this new Jesus I'm not familiar with. But the one I know, the one I know disrupted me as an eight-year-old, a nine-year-old child. Over at Christ Temple on 903 South Pillaging Drive. It interrupted me. The Spirit of God was all over me. It was all in me. It was all over me. And we had what is called children's meeting at 5 on Sundays to 6.30 when they had prayer before night service was at 7. And it was Bishop Oscar H. Uh, Oscar Sanders. They call him St. Gillen Sanders. Bishop Sanders was the pastor. And, and, and we got the, the young people got the praising God so strongly. And the spirit of God came into the house. I can tell, I can testify about Second Chronicles. I saw it happen. Because why? The spirit got so powerful that the priests they couldn't even, they were trying to stress us down. Right? They were trying to get us to sit down. We sit down because we, we believe in all, right? And they believe in all that. Too, uh, we sit down with the spirit of God uh, kept bubbling up on the inside uh, and it kept coming out uh, and it kept bubbling uh, and it kept going uh, to where they said well we don't do prayer uh, we'll just wait till 7 o'clock uh, because surely this will wear off uh, but it didn't wear off uh, because at 7 o'clock uh, when they decided at 7 or 5 uh, we can oh uh, God uh, we can be them uh, we might as well join them uh, and when they started to pray with the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud and the glory of the Lord was in his temple and nobody could stand the minister nobody could stand because why the glory of the Lord had taken place do you not know that the Spirit of the Lord will speak to your situation before I can even get my hands laid on? The Spirit of the Lord will speak to your heart before I can even speak to you. The Spirit of the Lord will move as long as there is a living vessel to receive.